peaceful, restful um, sleep. Um, shall we start with a short prayer just to ask uh, the Lord's help? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, of the loving Lord. Let us open our heart to his love, to his unconditional love, to his love which restores us, purifies us, elevates us, feeds us. Let us entrust ourselves like little children. <clears throat> to Mary. She knows the way to take us and immerse us in Jesus' love. Have you noticed the speed of the Hail Mary? Mm. It's more completely different from yesterday. Mm. I introduced you to the prayer. You entrusted yourself. <coughs> so God leads. So when we say the Hail Mary, it, it accompanies our prayer. It protects our prayer but it's God who is working, you see. So it's important to remember that God is the first one who works. God is the first one who speaks in us and through us and makes it happen. A little bit like after communion, we surrender and trust ourselves and God leads. It doesn't mean that we don't do anything during the day. It means that during prayer, during this moment of connection, God, He is the one who knows uh, who he is and how to bring us from where we are to where he is, which is, we don't know how, but he does it. So I, do, I hope you notice the difference. Anyway, so <clears throat> um, uh, thank you again for having me uh, uh, this morning. It's, it's really um, very good because it will help a little bit um, what we started to, to see together tomorrow, uh, yesterday to, to, to deepen it or uh, to add um, um, uh, certain elements. Uh, don't um, hesitate to grab one of these leaflets here. There are enough and take with you if you want to share with some uh, other people. I think the most important part, apart from, of course, you can read it, but the most two things, most important two things here are uh, the website. The website, the website is, uh, has a wealth of uh, information, um, articles, and it sends you to videos. Many of them, all the articles are free. Many of the videos are free. So don't hesitate to tap into, tap into this uh, wealth of um, formation, spiritual formation. I would really recommend one day, whenever you feel ready to attend, we can see that either you, you you attended a, a course, um, either pre-recorded online or I, I can come here and then we can have the course also. It's a, it's a long course, but it's a very important course. It's called Solid Foundations. Check it online, go under courses, uh, schoolofmary.org courses. First line is Solid Foundation course, the entrance gate. When you find this course, read the syllabus, read the syllabus. It's a long course. I used to give it to Carmelite novices in 95, back in 95, I, and then was pushed by, by God, by his providence to give it to nuns and then lay people. And then since then, uh, everybody, of course, majority are lay people and here we are. Okay, so uh, don't hesitate to have an idea because it, it opens your horizons and shows you the richness of, as uh, Robert said, the richness of our tradition. 
um, a, it's, it's, we have on one hand an extreme richness and on the other hand in, on the, in the reality everywhere a huge poverty. Uh, it breaks your heart when, when you see that why this richness is not conveyed. Okay? So in the School of Mary you, you have this, we try our best to convey this richness. It's all Catholic, essentially Catholic, but it's, it's huge. Okay? So now, today, um, uh, this morning, I will uh, reinforce what we saw uh, yesterday. I will add elements that, uh, that weren't explained uh, yesterday. Please go and read, check uh, the website, check on the Prayer of the Heart, check the videos. I uh, have a playlist on YouTube. Just put my name on YouTube and then choose the playlist on Prayer of the Heart. Just um, watch it, re-watch it again, pray with it. And I hope it, it, will, um, it will help you. It did help many people, so no reason not to help. It's all a practical, visual also presentation of what is prayer. Prayer, the silent prayer is the most intricate, most difficult one. I'm teaching St. Teresa of Avila since 1994. So it's a long experience, plus St. John of the Cross, plus St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, of course, other saints. And, you know, until you start to see the trigger, the trigger, it takes time. Even though it's in front of you, even though masters of spiritual life pointed to it, you don't see it. So I will try to convey these, I would say, these secrets of the, the silent prayer. Please don't ever think that this is the only way to pray. It's the, the, the common denominator, as I said yesterday, but in the same time, you have other another another form of prayer which is Lexio Divina uh, which is listening to Jesus in, through the daily readings which be better, would be better would be better on a daily on a daily basis listen to Jesus we want to listen to Jesus yes or no we want him to talk to us yes or no yes he wants it more than you want it he wants to talk to you more than you want it. so why not sitting learning learning to sit down and discern how to really listen to him and not to our imaginations, our, our thought, and so forth. So there is an important teaching on Lexio Divina, which comes, I would say, these are the two legs that make us walk. And these two legs, you find them in the Mass. The Mass has two parts. The first part is the liturgy of the Word. The second part is the liturgy of the Eucharist. And our life <coughs> is about digesting one Mass. I would be happy with one Mass, but one real Mass, which is listening properly to Jesus who is present and talks to us through the readings. Uh, we have a beautiful uh, sentence in uh, one of the documents of the Vatican II which says, whenever the Word of God is proclaimed, which means whenever the reader during the Mass is reading, Jesus himself is present and wants to talk to, to you to, to your, to in, in your heart. So there is a sacramentality, which means there is a communication of the grace of God during the proclamation. So it's not a reading, it's a proclamation. It's a sacred action. So Lexio Divina is the digestion of this word that Jesus came to give me, uh, comes to give me every day at Mass. So Lexi Divina is one leg, and the other leg comes from, as I said yesterday, from the very moment of communion. I received Jesus, I have a big treasure, but am I using this treasure during the day? It's stored, but am I using it? This is why, as I said yesterday, I need to enter, open the door of the tabernacle. Uh, we are living tabernacles. We open the door. And we find Jesus there. This is why Teresa of Avila says, don't leave him alone. Don't leave him alone. What does it mean? He's inside of your heart, but where are you? Outside. You remember yesterday, we saw that, that bit, no? That we can be outside, no? We can be outside. This is our heart, our conscience. We can be outside, uh, busy. Busy with our attention. I can be working, but I can be here at the same time. 
with a bit of exercise, you can reach that point. You see? So I can be outside, but I need to enter and then enter deeper. She says, don't leave him alone, which means God, the living God, you received him in communion. He is inside of you, but where are you? You're out. You have richness. You received food for today, but you're not eating it. So prayer of the heart is in fact the digestion of the communion I received today. Or if I went, uh, at least we are, at least we need to go once, once a week, which is Sunday. So the storage I have, the food I have, is capable of feeding me. But I need to tap into it. So I need to enter and eat. Okay? So these are the two legs. Digest the, the digestion of the Mass. Jesus came to talk to me. Di digestion, Lexi Divina. Jesus gave himself to me. Digestion, prayer of the heart. They are not optional. They are the digestion process of the Mass. So you see here that it's not a particular spirituality. We don't belong to uh, this or that spirituality. We draw from the immense richness of the Carmelite spirituality, but we draw also from the fathers of the church, the desert fathers, the masters of spiritual life, the mystics, and so forth. Okay? But at least the ones who taught prayer, because the saint prays for us, but the master, who is hopefully a saint, teaches us. So we need to uh, listen to that. Okay? So remember uh, to um, explore the immensity of spiritual life, the immensity of Jesus' call to you. He is not calling you to a small thing. He is calling you to an immense thing. So open, open. Okay? Now, let us um, uh, do another thing since today, uh, Father, what was the name of? Stephen. 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 Father Stephen this morning celebrated the Mass. He chose to celebrate because there is no particular feast. What we do usually in Carmel to celebrate Mass of Our Lady of uh, Mount Carmel, so it's a devotional Mass. I just wanted to talk about one aspect of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is extremely useful in the prayer of the heart and in our Christian life in general. Um, in the uh, during the Mass, there is a part in the in the beginning of the second part of the Mass called the preface which is right after, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord, let us, thank, let us give thanks to the Lord, and then the priest says a prayer, then we say, holy, holy, holy. So between lift up your hearts and holy, holy, there is a prayer that the priest only says, and this is called the preface, preface, one word. For the um, feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the priest can choose between two prefaces, preface number one, preface number two, they are all around the feast that is, which is celebrated. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, 16th of July, but he can take back again uh, the same preface if he wants. Now, these two prefaces are, I would say, a huge step ahead, a renewal, a deepening that happened very mysteriously uh, when the Carmelites had to renew their own uh, missal, their own specific uh, prayers. And these two prefaces in the Latin form are extremely bold. They describe us a very important aspect of the scapula. The scapula is something, is a, is a, is a, is a gift given uh, by God, by Our Lady, to the Carmelites, but it, anybody can uh, receive the scapula, can receive it being imposed with prayers and, and commitment. But you don't have to now, right now, but it's good to know the meaning of it. So leave the, the fact that, okay, shall I wear it or not? Leave it just for a second. Try to see the meaning of it. And this is something that I would say belongs to our baptism. The true prefaces are, are, are something of a <coughs> deepening uh, that it's just happened. I, I read about it. I knew even the, 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 the Carmelites, they are dead now who uh, were part of, of the writing of the text and so forth. Now, the preface says the following, and I'm summarizing it. There is an article on the website, uh, the schoolofmary.org. You go articles, Our Lady, and then you have a long list of articles because there are different subjects. So you, ch you choose the subject, Our Lady in Spiritual Life. Then you choose, I think it's number 13, 13 uh, on the Feast of uh, Mount Carmel. 
There is text and a video. You can watch both. And I ex explain what I'm about to say, but I'll say it very briefly because we need to uh, continue. It says, and I'm summing it up, that God is giving us Mary's spirit to contemplate his son. So I'm not contemplating Jesus with my own capacity. I'm contemplating Jesus with Mary's capacity. Do you follow me? Mary's capacity, who is Mary? Mary is full of the Holy Spirit. St. John of the Cross says in one of the rarest mentions of, of her, he says that it's only the Holy Spirit who works in her. Remember also she's immaculate conception, so there's no obstacles. There have never been any obstacle in her. Of course, she is offering her full collaboration. So the incredible audacity here is to say that God is not asking you to imitate Our Lady. No, he, the text goes further, further deeper. It, the text says God is giving us, giving you her spirit to contemplate her son, her capacity, the way the Holy Spirit works in her, if you prefer to be more theological. And God, it's not, it's not finished, God is giving you her heart to love him and to love your brothers and sisters. So her capacity, the way the Holy Spirit works in her, is given to us this height. So when you pray, you don't say, Mary, please talk to Jesus for me or intercede for me. No, your place is in her and her in you. So you are also high above, you see. You're not, you're not like right here, like this is, let us say, me, and this is Jesus, and this is Mary. So usually when we understand intercession or mediation, what do we say? We say, Mary, please talk to Jesus for me, or lead me to Jesus. No, the text says complete a different, completely a different thing. The text says, this me here enters in Mary and is dealing with Jesus the way Mary deals with Jesus. So we are lifted up in her capacity, and then we love Jesus as she loves Jesus with her heart and with the Holy Spirit who is burning uh, in her heart. Did you see the difference here between this type of weak mediation? I call it weak mediation. This is me. That's not the church. This is me. So weak mediation, strong mediation. There is an article, one of the first articles, and please read it. Please read it. Uh, I explain this in the article. That the, the, the gift of God is much bigger than what we are understanding. This is why it's important. So the audacity of this feast, the, 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 the deep meaning of the scapula, it says that Sir John of the Cross used to speak very deep things about the scapula. And I, I guess it's something along these lines. It's, it's just a guess because we don't know what, what he said. Okay. So do you see the difference here? Would you like to stay on earth where you are with your own capacity and say, Mary, please, can you talk to Jesus for me? So you don't even reach Mary and you don't even reach Jesus in a way huh? because there is a distance here. Would you like this or would you prefer that one, which is lift me, put me in you or give me, God is I accept. Mary comes and visits her cousin Elizabeth. Mary comes to your place. She is the gift of God for you. The Immaculate Conception is given to you. She belongs to you, as said the rest of the child Jesus says. You belong to me. Your virtues are mine. So she comes and offers herself as a gift, the Holy Spirit in her, of course, because her alone doesn't, doesn't make sense. So I receive her capacity, and therefore, the way I love Jesus, the way I know Jesus, is not my way, it's her way. Hence, hence the importance of entrusting myself in her hands. You want something powerful, you want something strong. <coughs> Paradoxically, 
offer yourself and put yourself in her hands let her lead you let her lead you please please come and sit if you want you see let her lead you so the paradox is here is the more you entrust yourself the better your life becomes the more you entrust yourself in Mary's hand the more she leads you your prayers changes you the day the way you spend your day changes everything changes and strangely you are stronger but not stronger with your own strength stronger with Mary's intervention God's intervention okay so I could spend hours on this uh, I gave you indication about at least these two articles so please go schoolofmary.org courses uh, sorry articles Our Lady in Spiritual Life and then one of the first one uh, it is the first or the second I think it's the second is on this uh, weak and strong mediation and then number 13 is Our Lady uh, of Mount Carmel and many others okay so now let us and this is a very good I would say reinforcing of what we were saying yesterday so we are not departing from the prayer of the heart on the contrary the prayer of the heart is being here what is the prayer of the heart it's just being here when when yesterday I said offer yourself uh, entrust yourself to Mary like a little child why did I say little child? Because you stop jiggling, you stop moving, you stop wanting certain things. You say, okay, God, you know better how, how we should pray. Because the, the Holy Spirit in Mary knows better. So what do you do? You entrust yourself inside. And what happens? You find yourself, you don't see that. That happens deep inside of us. Like communion, no? it happens deep inside of us. You love Jesus and, uh, uh, with Mary's heart. Mary's heart belongs to you. It's God's gift. Mary's mind or spirit, I prefer, the deepest part, belongs to you. So you can contemplate Jesus with her spirit. This is the deepest aspect of the rosary. Why do we repeat ten times, Hail Mary? Just to keep ourselves inside. It's not about thinking what we are saying. It's just asking God, pray for us. No, the key of the, the movement in the, in the Hail Mary is what? It's pray for us, which means what? Take me from where I am to where you are. Introduce me in you. So when you repeat ten times, introduce me in you, you are saying just keep me in you. So this is why you can say it very peacefully, letting them work. It's like the Eucharist, it's deep. Okay, it's not something that you can change or move or see or imagine. You, you, you see what I'm trying to say? So, why do I say ten times the Hail Mary? It's just as much as possible to maintain myself inside. Am I aware of it? Not really, but I probably would feel a better uh, myself more peaceful. But there is no direct access to this secret encounter. So you have the treasure. You have the treasure. You can be here at any time. Not only when you say the rosary, during the day, hopefully. You see? Okay? So we go back to the... Uh, yes? Is the good thing in there for to say to Mary, help us to pray? Yeah, she, yeah once you... And, is it a good thing to ask Mary to help us to pray? Yes, of course, in general terms. But when you offer yourself to her, this is, you are doing it. You're not asking only, you are doing it. It's happening. In the sense that when you offer yourself, she immediately enacts this. You don't need to tell her, please, could you kindly just allow me to pray? No. As uh, Grignon de Montfort says, no? You knock at the door of Mary, she says, Jesus. Which means she's like a propeller, a, a, a rocket. She... She pushes you directly to, to Jesus. She then never keeps us to herself. Mary is constantly um, drawing us into Jesus and the best way, not our way, the Holy Spirit way. Okay? So, so John, that, that, so that, that speaks to me of contemplation. It is contemplation. And be, being, the sense of being. It is, absolutely, absolutely. This is contemplation. This is the, deep, the deepest part of contemplation, not the Lexi Divina contemplation. That's the prayer of the heart contemplation. When you read John of the Cross, uh, when he talks about <laughs> contemplation, when you read Teresa of Avila and she talks about contemplation, 
This is contemplation. Do you have access to it? It's deep inside. In this sense, yes, you have access to it. But do you see it? Do you, um, do you visualize it? No, be careful. We will talk about this, okay? So just be patient. So uh, it takes time. You need to listen to it five, 10 times in order, to, uh, or in, order, in order for it to sink in. So let us go back, if you don't mind, to yesterday's example of the sea. <coughs> you, you find now what I'm about to say, you find it, you find it in the book. I'll just give you the, the uh, written support. So what I said about Our Lady is on, online accessible, it's on the website, but now what I'm about to say, you find it in, in, in this book, okay? The book that uh, Robert took uh, about. It's here, if you don't have it, you can, you, can, you can have it. Now, this, this drawing, let me explain it, and let me add now, today, important elements of the, uh, the, uh, the way the Holy Spirit works. So I need all your attention uh, here. This is an example which conveys important theological truth. This is the sea. So all this should be blue. Just for you to, visual, to understand. This is the bottom of the sea. I will explain. I'm just showing, um, uh, describing the, the drawing and then I will ex explain the elements of it. This is the sun. Of course, the sun is very far. The sun symbolizes Jesus himself. The goal of contemplative prayer, the goal of prayer, the common denominator, is when we pray, we need to be in Jesus. So, if our heart, we will see later on, is somewhere here in the water, the goal of prayer is to have our heart inside of the sun. So that's, that's the challenge, okay? That's the goal. Now, <clears throat> where is our heart? What is the sea and what is uh, air and space? So, we have here um, the sea and we have here air and space. The sea is us, it's you and me. So the sea has uh, thoughts. So it's the mind. You have imagination. You have feelings. Uh, feelings, emotions. Etc. <clears throat> usually, usually, even when we pray, we move inside of the water because we are between our feelings, our visualization, imagination, our thoughts. But the question is, are we here? And we need to be here. So moving in the water, moving inside of the water, uh, remember yesterday we said if I'm stuck at the bottom of the water, I have a chain here, so this is my heart, I, it could be stuck at the bottom of the water, and you remember yesterday I said this is in the case where you have an overwhelming issue happening, a big worry, a big argument you had, um, a state of distress, you are in that state, so the image of it here is the heart with this chain riveted at the bottom of the sea. So I can't move. And this is how we solve that. We said, entrust your problem, entrust your worry, entrust your state of distress to the Lord. Then, in, in fact, when you do that, you broke the chain. It doesn't mean that your problem is gone. Remember the question yesterday. It doesn't mean that you don't feel the problem like um, uh, at all. You still feel the problem, sense that it's there, but you are freer to move your heart. Now, the C in general means your freedom, your free will, your decision, and you move in the sea. So from the bottom to different uh, levels in the water until 
the surface of the water, this depends on us. With the general help of the grace of God. General help of the grace of God. I'm entering here more in a, in a theological aspect. St. Therese of Avila, at a certain point, I think it's Book of uh, Life, chapter 14, uh, paragraph 6. You can find all this online explained. Some of it is here, but more details are online. Under prayer of the heart. Under prayer of the heart. So, article, prayer of the heart. The general help of the grace of God is given all the time to all of us. In any situation and in any grace or sin situation. Otherwise, we will never go to, to confession. If the grace is not attracting us back, we will never go back to confession. So the grace of God is still there. But it is called general. <coughs> general help. It's like the blood in the muscle. You don't say, mm, I ask God to give me some blood so I can move my arm. No, the blood is already there. But it's given. This is why we say help or grace. So moving here depends on us. So there is this part of the prayer which depends on us. There is something that depends on God and something depends on us. So see, see, see the movement of my hand. Something depends on God and something depends on us. And prayer is the meeting between two beings. God's being, this is the kingdom of God, and this is your kingdom, yourself. Remember, God respects your freedom, your free will, your decision. To an extent you can't imagine. This is why moving your heart, or better said, giving your heart to God, depends on you and only on you. <coughs> God gives you the grace to offer your heart. This is given through baptism, through through general grace, I said, offered. Even, even, God forbid, in a state of sin, God still is there, okay, you say, okay, you can still decide, say, okay, I'll give you my heart. Even though I am in a very bad situation, I give you my heart. I entrust you. This is why we go back again. You see? So, giving my heart acknowledges the existence of, constant existence of this grace given to us, to each one of us, and is necessary because it's the manifestation of your desire. It is the manifestation of your desire to be, uh, to enter in prayer, to enter in Jesus' heart. But the maximum we can reach is, is the surface of the water. The maximum we can reach is the surface of the water. And this is what God is expecting. Remember the beautiful passage from the book of Revelation? I am at the door. I'm knocking at the door. If you open, I will enter. So to open the door is to bring the heart to the meeting point. Who is at the meeting point? Yes, the Holy Spirit, but allow me, I prefer to say Mary. Okay? When you say Mary, you say the Holy Spirit, otherwise there is no sense. it doesn't make sense. So, Mary is here to take your heart and introduce your heart in the sun. How quickly she does it? How quickly the movement from here to there occurs? If you really offered your heart, how quickly from here to there? Look at my hand, like this. There is no moment between offering your heart and then being taken by Our Lady, the Holy Spirit, and introduced in Jesus. And introduced in Jesus means what? He gives you His love. This is why yesterday when I defined uh, prayer of the heart, I said it's an immersion. Being immersed in His love. But immersed means drinking. When you receive communion, you are drinking, you are eating, even though you don't have the perception of it. But once you receive communion, and if you spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes, or if you come back to it later in the day through prayer of the heart, you are drinking. This time you spend in silence and in prayer, the prayer of the heart, 
is a moment of feeding. It's like having a meal. This is why the Carmelites, for instance, have an hour of this in the morning, an hour of this again in the late, late afternoon or early evening. Entire hour. Why do we do that? Because you're eating. You need it. We need the roots of our being, the hidden roots of our being, like a tree. We are like a tree. We need to feed ourselves with the water and the sun. The water is the prayer of the heart. So it's upside down if you want the tree. We need our roots to be immersed in, 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 in Jesus. And the visible part of the tree, that's Lexi Divina, that's receiving the light of his word. So just leave that for a moment. So we need to feed our tree with water. We need to water our tree. Okay? So, now, let us continue. God says, I want you, I would like to immerse you in me, but I need to have access to your heart. Heart here symbolizes all your being. So, you decide to give your heart or not to give your heart. You decide to sort of give your heart, which is not really giving your heart, a sort of hesitating way. It's like, I'm praying, but do I really, do I really want? You see? This is us human beings, huh? Do I really, am I really giving my, my, my heart? You see? Can, can you please come? Yeah. So imagine, uh, I don't know. So imagine this is, this is, please come, come closer. So imagine, uh, I remind Anto. you, Anto. Anto, yeah. Anto is uh, our lady. And I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's good to be honest. It's gracious. Our lady is gracious. I take that all day long. Yeah. Of course, full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And this is me wanting to pray. And this is my heart. Usually I have a. A red heart from the Valentine in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is how I'm praying. So this is the way I'm offering my heart. Okay? So I'm praying. Now I am in the chapel or somewhere at home in silence. Uh, I have a lovely place at home. I have a little candle, a little beautiful icon, etc. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. But where am I? That's the question. And how can I move? Because this is mysterious. How? So... I can be very much here, or here. You can draw another heart here, another heart here, or another heart here. You see? Where am I? It depends on what? On me giving my heart to Our Lady. It's not you, right? Our Lady. So, I, no, yeah, you, st you just stay here. Our Lady is here at the junction. <coughs> this limit here, between my being and her being, is this line. So I can be offering my heart like this. Can she take my heart? No. Will she take my heart? Yes. No. no. That's the point. You see? No. Is it like an invisible barrier? Between yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's your freedom, your free will, which God respects. And this is the tragic thing in Christianity or any, any other, for, for all us human beings. We are not aware to which extent God respects our free will and will not intervene. He will not come and say, okay, take my heart and go. No. Even if you tell him just uh, vaguely, he won't do that. How do we break that invisible barrier? Say again? How do we break that invisible well, I'm barrier? I'm about to explain it. I'm about to explain. Right. So, if you do this... Now, please keep, keep your hand extended. Yeah. So this is the constant attitude of Our Lady. The constant attitude of God. He is at the door. At the door of what? The limits, the barrier, as you said, the limits, the frontier between His being, His sovereign being, sovereign area, his, the kingdom. Now we call it the kingdom of God. Now what? This is the kingdom of God, all this area. And this is my kingdom. But I would like to enter in the kingdom of God. No, if you do not become like children, you will not enter in the kingdom of God and so forth. But there are conditions. So one of the conditions is to be like a child. But also to frankly 
clearly straightforward. Give my heart. No, no, you, you see what I'm trying to say with the movement of my, my body. No, no, or a bit like this. No. Like sometimes you shake hands with people, it's a clear, frank, man to man. You know, good. You see? But sometimes it's like. <laughs> is, this, is this shaking hands? Did you really put your hand in the hands of God? Do you understand the point here? Shaking hand properly. Shaking hand properly with God. With God. I'm here. So this is all my will. All my will. I'm okay. It's a handshake. Yeah, proper one. Okay? Not too strong because he's, he's rather the one, he's God, <laughs> not you. But all of you in his hands. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So prayer is this, you're asking how. Otherwise I can be shaking my hand like this. Or I could be for an hour like this. And he is like this. So please remember this. When you pray, when you receive communion, when you say the rosary, when you say the divine office, when you attend mass, you can be like this. During the day, you can be like this. You can only do that if you have a relationship with our lady, though you have to trust. Of course, without trust, and that's it's not possible. Most people don't have that relationship. Okay. Can I just say something? Something's coming to my heart. Well, I, I was with my sister yesterday, and she's a, she's a little child. The child's only one and a half, but he's very clingy to his mother. You now he's running after, <laughs> clinging to her wee dress. That's his mother. But to understand that we're, we are children of God, we're made in God's like an image. Our lady's our mother, and so when, when, when you, when, yeah, the hand, but when you, when you hand our lady your heart, truly, like that child that clings to the mother's dress. Yeah, the, she, problem, the problem is the trust. Yeah, the yeah, issue yeah. of trust yes. before that. Yes. yes. How can I trust a person that you don't know? That I, you don't know, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, sorry to interrupt sorry. you. Sorry. 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 What you're saying is absolutely correct, but this is the case where the child has this connection with the mom and doesn't have any other person with the mom. But here mm -hmm. we are talking, I think, we're talking about prior to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, you know, the child is born with the mom. Yes. While in our case, we are born and our lady is yes. somewhere else. Yes. So I th your question is absolutely vital. And I, I did meet um, people who, to whom they are Catholics, but to whom our lady, they had a difficulty. Why? Because the past, yeah. family, yes. your, your own mother, if you had it, because sometimes we didn't have our mother anymore, you lost her very early. Sorry, I'm, I'm just clarifying this point. And your dad. So the first school of trust is at home. And we don't always have that. We don't always have that. And sometimes it can be a long journey. It can be a long journey to gain back that trust. But I would try to, I would like to try this, yeah, just to answer your question. You can relax a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not God, so. <laughs> it's Mary. <laughs> yeah, oh, Mary, yeah. <laughs> now, I think uh, as. Um, well, the philosopher said, it's, it's, um, it's a gamble, but it's a winning gamble. So trust and experience the answer. Open yourself, even though you, you were never able to trust anybody because of your own history, your own journey. You didn't have the chance at home to have that mother, you know, that you, which you described. Mm -hmm. Uh, this caring person, unconditional love. This is where we learn God in the beginning. The first image of God is given to us or not given or blurred or damaged is in the beginning. And we built on, on that. You, we cannot just cross that very easily and say, oh, yeah, okay, let us pray. Yeah, let us pray. But then what? Based on what? What is my, my experience? The examples I'm giving are human examples, but if I don't have this human example in the beginning, or if I had it in a damaging way, now the journey is longer. I need to 
to, to gain that trust, to, to discover, to discover that mother. And sometimes it's at, at, uh, um, uh, as an adult that I need to discover, rediscover or discover first, uh, first hand uh, trust. Okay? But my advice is to sow trust. To, to, it's a gamble, but it's a winning gamble. Gamble with God, you will always win. Gamble means, it's an act of faith when you think about it. No? It's like, okay, I know your God. I don't know, I don't know you, but I know your God, theoretically. I know that you're worth uh, uh, of our, of my trust, or I know you're Our Lady, but I don't know you. And you can ask also. No? Ask and then you will receive. As uh, you were saying, no, who, who was saying that? Um, ask, um, uh, ask God to show you Mary, to open your eyes. Uh, Holy Spirit, give me the eyes and the trust I need to uh, to enter to entrust myself to Our Lady. Okay, okay, okay. So I I, I totally take on board what you are saying. That's not obvious. The trust is not obvious, but. Still, trust is the foundation. So it's important to um, not to work only intellectually, but I, as I said, to quote unquote gamble, which means so trust, try it uh, blindly, in gamble in the sense that blindly, say, okay, go, I'll go for it. And you will see that it's a constantly winning gamble. Yes? So yeah, uh, probably a, a stupid question, but no. The, no, I was just gonna ask you, is there any, exercises for trust because you know if you're doing uh, you, there are practical exercises you can do with people to gain trust etc you know the falling or the, you know doing that at heights or stuff like that that you can work those with a group of people so you can actually gain that practical but this is their mental practical exercises or mental practical mm -hmm. exercises mm -hmm. we can do to improve um, that trust so the question is, uh, do we have uh, any exercise to improve uh, trust? Uh, first, I would underline the delicate aspect of your question, which is when you are with a person who, who has serious difficulty to trust, you can't just enter like a bulldozer in his life or her life. You know, it's you have to to go gentle and listen first to the person, and you will be maybe the first bridge for them toward trust. So the exercise is yourself. Is is your trust in them? Uh, uh, um, uh, well, I remember a, a, a dialogue between a, a gentleman and Padre Pio. He said, uh, oh, I don't believe in God. He said to Padre Pio, oh, I don't, oh, I don't have the trust. So Padre Pio said, but God believes in you. Mm -hmm. You need to hear that. So they need to hear you. If, it's, if, you have, if you are the one who is leading, I think it's important to remember that you are the bridge at a certain moment. You become the bridge. If you have that trust and you are talking to a person who, ha who is struggling, you need to be very gentle and understanding that yes, this can happen, and how it happens, and listen, listen. Receive the person in your heart. Hospitality, spiritual hospitality. Receive your brother in your heart. Of course, this re requires, you know, to, to, to be, have been received myself, mm. and, and discover my own uh, poverty, and my own uh, limitations, and my own uh, human, uh, um, how, how what's the word in English, Re uh, wreck? Uh, um, uh, I'm a wreck. Uh, what was it? We sing it in Grace, the, the beautiful song on wretchedness. Wretched. You see, <clears throat> so when I, the, the closer we get to God, the more we discover, you, you, you can rest, you can rest, sorry. Do you want a glass of water? You I'm fine, no, no. It's tiring to be gone, no? <laughs> so, wretchedness, no? The, the, the closer we draw to God, the closer we discover who we are, but also who He is. So don't be surprised to discover your own limitations, your own poverty. You are growing. You are not going backward.
and notice that in the same time you are noticing, uh, you are discovering His mercy. They go together. You cannot bear the vision of your own limitations and poverty. Poverty in the sense of psychological and spiritual, in this sense. Mm? Uh, wretchedness. You know? yeah. mm. uh, the more you, you grow spiritually, the more, the, the more God draws closer and transforms <coughs> you, the more you discover these two aspects, but they are two sides of one coin, which is how my nothingness and his mercy. And that's, I think, the eternal song. Our eternal song will be that, song of praise. It's when you hand, seeing that I'm going to say, when you hand your heart to the Blessed Virgin, she then takes your heart, the love that you have in your heart for her son and for her, and she places it in her son's heart. Yeah, immediately, of course. This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, just, just uh, finishing here the, the question. So remember that first you, if you have a trust, deepen it, and then whenever you deal with other people, I think a one-on-one -on -one encounter is very important because how trust started, it's the mother, it's the father, it's somebody, a priest or a teacher or a granddad, or a grandmother who started that trust in us. So a one-on-one -on -one person, you said, do you have any exercise for trust? The exercise is you, you transmitter of trust, you see? And you want it or not, is when you sit down with this person or you go for a walk with this person and you listen. You listen and receive your brother in your heart. And your brother feels that his story entered in you. You received him. Ah, is it possible? There is somebody with whom I can relate. Beginning of trust, a small seed of trust. You see, that's the exercise. For me, that's the, ex the first exercise. Of course, later on you can do exercises, but if this is not there, the person is alone, is, is deeply in a deep well alone. And how can you bring this person out of the well? It's you. You see, it's you. Don't, don't say, oh, try this, try that. No, I will listen to you. I'm here. You have maybe that's, I would say, stability uh, in God, but then you are a house, uh, a space, a chapel where you receive your brother. Okay? So just allow me to continue because uh, time is, is flying and we're, uh, all this is important. All this is important. Uh, don't get me wrong. So, providing we have a little bit of trust here, I offer myself like a little child, totally, unconditionally, in the hands of Mary. She takes me and introduces me in her son. Now, please notice the difference between this area, working in this area, and him working, God working in this area. This is the kingdom of God. And this is your own kingdom. Okay? So, offering, moving, moving in the water from wherever you are. You are here, you are here, you are here. To the surface of the water depends on you. God will not force prayer on you. Exceptionally, yes, he can give you a strong grace, but that's an exception. Don't base your spiritual life on the exception. Base your spiritual life on a growing relationship where you are still free till the end. Okay? So, please remember the difference between moving in the water and him leading us in air and space. Okay? So, you offer your heart, she comes, takes your heart and put it there. Now, um, I... Who, who ever read Way of Perfection of Teresa of Avila? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that right now because I don't want to overwhelm you with uh, concepts. It's better to, to grow in the... Um... Uh oh, nothing. Okay. If I have two more, that will be great, yes. So, now, yes, going back to... The, uh, what we were saying yesterday, the issue of distractions. 
So there's another uh, drawing that I'll make right now to help you. And the drawings are in the, um, in, the, uh, in the book. Let us for now take two minutes in silence because I want you to feel the vulnerability of your mind and imagination, your thoughts. Okay? So, just uh, imagine, no, I'm not here, we are in a chapel, we are praying, so you are in the presence of, uh, of Jesus, of Mary, and like uh, a little child, you are offering your heart to Mary. You offered your, your heart to Mary, you don't feel necessarily that there is a difference, but you did it. She takes your heart and immerses it in Jesus' fiery love. You don't feel that either. The encounter happens in the chest, as I was saying uh, yesterday, but the upper floor, the mind area, the, the skull here, is left alone, so you can have distractions, thoughts, crossing, noises, whatever is happening. So am I praying? Yes or no? Am I immersed? Yes or no? And as you can hear now, that's good, we are hearing some noise there in the kitchen. So it's not a perfect silent chapel. And this noise can annoy you. This noise, you can follow it. You can have something coming from your memory and you sort of travel with it. It's like a movie, you run the movie. And it's possible that you take control of the movie. So am I still praying? Yes or no? Yes or no? no. So let us, let us dive into, into that. So I will draw here a square. This image is in the, in the, in the, in the book. This diagram. And this is the heart. Where is God? God is at the bottom of my heart. So remember the, the first drawing, God is the sun. So I hope, don't use your imagination, but physically, space-wise, you're going up, no? Lift up your heart. And here, God is at the bottom of my heart. It's important to have the first drawing, the first diagram, and this diagram to understand <coughs> a certain, to get a certain flexibility when you pray. Don't be too rigid, it's this way and only that way. Just be open, and it's the same. The same God who is in the sun, in the first diagram, is in fact deep inside of you, deep inside of you. So, when I offer myself to God, there is like an axis here. Initially, I am here. What is this box? This box is the skull. You have two windows here. And there is a hallway between them. So, anything can enter. Any thought can enter any imagination and you might engage with it you might not engage if you do not engage it's passive distraction <coughs> if you engage you start to follow or you you get upset or something then it becomes active distraction
Passive distraction never prevents communion with Jesus. I will draw, I will draw the movement. Just give me a sec. <coughs> Active distraction, very probably, because you are asking the question, am I praying yes or no? I don't know. So, if I'm just listening to the noise coming from there, that's fine. But if I get annoyed by this noise there, which I am right now, <laughs> it's me, it's me who is taking, taking the lead. When we say active means you are taking the lead. So you took yourself and went back again. So normally, when you offer yourself, remember, surface of the water, you reach this point. So this is the surface of the water, but upside down. And then God comes, or Mary comes, she's waiting here, so it's upside down, huh? takes my heart, takes my heart, and put it inside of Jesus. I hope you see from where you are what is happening. Okay, so she takes my heart and put it inside. So that's the movement, upside down. I offered myself, this is the maximum where I can go. But the desire, the yearning desire of God is to take my heart and put it inside of him and immerse me. So this is water and this is uh, space, uh, air and space. Okay? Now, what is happening? Now, if I offered my heart, now my heart is here. So here there's nothing. But still, I can hear I can, uh, um, some thoughts can enter, either from outside, a flying thought, or the devil, or from my memory, bringing back some thoughts, some images, and they're here. That's fine. If they are passive, you are still here. But if you take over, like, Mm. It's annoying me that saying, oh, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? What happened? You are taking control over what is happening here. So God says, okay, you want back yourself, here's yourself. <laughs> you see how God is very flexible. God is not over controlling. You offered your heart, he takes it. But if you want your heart back, he says, okay, fine. You, are, you want to take the lead, you take the lead, that's fine. So, I go back here. Imagine you stay with that for uh, 10, 20 minutes, uh, annoyed, or busy with your mind, or tempted, or you had ugly pictures or images crossing in your mind. That happens, no? When you pray, expect that uh, it can happen. And it says nothing bad about you. Remember that this whole way doesn't belong to you. It's, it seems inside of you, but it's not you. It means in the sense that, you know, this is open here, and this is open here. This hallway is like when you go to, to the cinema. You're watching a movie. They're fighting in the movie. Are you fighting? They're killing in the movie. Are you killing? Do you have to go to confession after? No. Why? Because you weren't active. You were passive. You are watching a movie. You are not involved. You may be involved, by the way, yes. If the subject touches you, you can be very upset, you can cry, you can be full of rage, and you, <laughs> you might hate this or that, depending if it's a documentary or not a movie, etc. You see what I'm trying to say? You can take part, take sides. But if you're just watching a, a cowboy movie, killing each other, it's just some fun and that's it. So they're not, first, they're not killing each other. Second, you're not really totally involved in the movie, you're just having some relaxing time and that's it. So you are in a passive state. You can still be there. When we are at Mass, the beginning of the Mass, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Um, the Lord be with you and with, uh, your, and with your spirit. The Lord be with you and your spirit. Your spirit is with the Lord. Do you see my finger here? Mm -hmm. Your spirit 
into the law. So from the beginning of any prayer, <coughs> and more so the Mass, it's important to be in God, to attend Mass in a completely different way, where God is taking the lead, and it is my choice for Him to take the lead. You are still free. If you want to take yourself back, you can take yourself back. But you want to be at the level of the Mass. You want to be at the level of this altar uh, uh, of the Lord. No, uh, I'm referring to the vision and, uh, at uh, Noah. No, you have this lamb and these angels are moving. What does it mean? Something is happening. The, the only thing that was moving, our lady is not moving, yes or no? Our lady is like this, as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not expert in, in that. Our lady is not moving. St. Joseph is not moving. St. John is, is not moving. The lamp, I don't think, is, is moving. The cross is not moving. What is moving? Angels. The angels. Which means, here's the action. Here's the focus. Something is happening. Are you aware of it? Are you united to it? Where is Mary? Yes, she is like this. No, she's, she's just there. She's totally united to what is happening. Like, uh, the angel asks showing us that there is something happening, okay? So I can attend Mass outside of the Mass. My body is inside of the chapel or the church, but my spirit is not in God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. You see, you see it, you say it automatically. It should never be automatic. The Lord be with your spirit means you are here, the priest says, I am here, and I wish you, my wish, my best wish for you, is to be here. Lift up your hearts. We are entering in a more serious uh, place now, second part of the Mass. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. I can be at Mass here, I can be here, I can be here, I can be here. If I'm here, I'm immediately there. So, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. We are both, all of us are here. Lift up your hearts, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord, we lift them up to the Lord. He took us and we are inside. <coughs> what do we say when we are inside? Let us give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because he took us and introduced us in him. You see what's happening in this short dialogue? Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. See my finger. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. When we give thanks, we are not here. We are not outside. We are already inside. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Yes, it is right and just to give thanks, etc. Et you see what I'm trying to say? So, now, an added element to help us deal with the distraction. So distraction are normal. They don't, if they are passive, they do not prevent us from being united to him deep, deep down. Please remember this. If you are in prayer and suddenly you have an ugly image of anything, or ugly thought, or even beautiful, or whatever, it's happening here. Remember, it's the movie. You are not in the movie. You are just watching. But it's not you, it's just your mind. You are here. Stay calm. It's like when you are driving a car in the in summer. Your windows are open. And then a big bumblebee enters uh, in, in the car. In the, in the, uh, the uh, this front screen. Uh, the, the, how is it? The windscreen. Yeah. It's there. So what is the possible first movement? It's to be scared, no? So what do you do? <laughs> and what happens? <laughs> danger, no? If you are riding, uh, driving at uh, 100 miles or kilometers an hour, that's very dangerous if, if you do this, no? So what do you have to do? Stay calm. Yeah. Whatever the weather, you have to stay calm because otherwise it's your life and the life of your... Your, your family in, in the car or whoever you, you're driving. You see? That's the same thing in prayer. You are driving. God is driving. 
And then suddenly a huge bumblebee enters. Stay calm. This is an important response. To stay calm, to keep peace is your duty. Just a moment. To keep peace is your duty. It's you sow peace, you gain right peace. You sow <clears throat> trouble, you get trouble, and you go even further. You reinforce yourself <coughs> here. You fight, and please listen to this, you fight against destruction. Where will you be? Destruction is happening here. You were here. If you fight against destruction, where are you? You came back. So you are reinforcing the bumblebee importance. The bumblebee has no importance. The cowboy moving in front of you, killing each other, there is no importance whatsoever. You are seeing it. I accept that. But you are not part of it. Stay calm as much as you can. Now, let us take as, as um, yeah, an example that you were distracted in the sense of you moved from passive to active. You followed the movie, you got involved to it, you, was, you, 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 you followed the image or the bumblebee or the worry or the memory or, or anything. It can be something very light, but you are following it. And you spend 10, 20 minutes after uh, on it. And then after 10, 20 minutes, you are in adoration, like we will have this uh, afternoon. And then suddenly you realize, oh my Lord, that's 10 minutes. I was like, woo. Now, what do you do? So let us take it from that moment on. What do you do? You discover, you become aware that you spend 10 minutes or 20 minutes of this long hour, instead of being with the Lord, fighting or being distracted, as we say, being distracted by anything that happens in, in, in your mind or in your imagination. What do you do? First possibility is you get upset with yourself, disappointed with yourself. Again, I did it. Again, I fell into it. I couldn't control myself. I couldn't keep the calm. I couldn't say what Jean said. No, I couldn't do what he said. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are not... Choose the, the most direct way to go back. Choose the most direct way to go back to that state. What is it? Yeah. Offer yourself again. As if you are starting again. This is why I say, people can ask, but John, I don't know, am I really distracted or not? I have doubt, am I really praying or not? What, what can you do? Repeat gently the act, like the waves against the beach or the shore. You know, gentle waves. So from time to time, you repeat the act. Because you're not sure, because we don't have access to this area. This is very deep in us. No, it's like communion. You receive Jesus' body, uh, you receive Jesus' divinity. Have you touched, have you sensed his divinity? No, you might sense something, but usually no. You have a, uh, some recollection, okay, fine, but you don't have direct access. But who has access to Jesus' divinity? Is your spirit or heart. So I don't know if I am connected or not, if I am drinking him or eating him or not, or no. So what, what am I supposed to do? Okay, say you have a doubt, gently offer yourself again. So repeat the movement. Even if you have to repeat it 60 times during the hour, repeat it. If it's gently done, in peace, that's fine. Okay? So let us go back to the case. Now I spent 10, 20 minutes very upset, with my, uh, uh, very distracted. What is my reaction? If you get upset, you're losing time. You are creating more distance you're, because you are reinforcing your presence here. You are, it's like you. There is too much of you in the story here. What is the shortest way to go back? Offer yourself again. Now, you will say, but Jean, I lost 10 or 20 minutes of uh, the hour of adoration. How sad, no? I'm voicing our human calculations, no? 10 minutes, 60 minutes, I lost 20 minutes, how oh, awful. 
How awful I am. No. I lost all this. No. No. He doesn't look at how long, how the length of the time you spend in him. He looks at the quality of your trust when you decided to take the short, the, the short uh, journey back. You say, he can get upset with me because 10 to 20 minutes lost. Then Jesus is upset with me. What did we say yesterday? God is unconditional love. He loves not because I deserve to be loved, which in general is what we think. No, he loves us because he is love. In a way, he is a, a disabled. God is disabled, not mentally disabled, but nature disabled. He doesn't have a bad nature. He is only goodness. Constant, <coughs> constant shining, constant uh, flow, constant uh, uh, <coughs> fall, like the falls, Niagara Falls, no? Powerful fountain, no? He can't stop himself from that because this is his nature. This is who he is. So when you pray, you are in front of this God, not the God of your imagination. You are in front of the one who cannot stop loving you. But you want to deserve to be loved. You want to pay for your love. You see, that's the, our problem. We pay for everything. We pay for everything. There's nothing free in life. Yeah, maybe the love of our mother, sometimes even, not even that one, but anyway. <laughs> we want to pay, we want to pay for everything. We need to learn that with God we don't pay. That's the difficulty. We don't like it. We want to earn. Right. Uh, we want to earn His love. We want to earn. No, you will not earn God's love. God is love. Full stop. So, Get used to that. Change your habits. Think, change your, the way you think. Everything is free. Look at the nature. Look at the sea. Everything is free. Did you earn it? Did you pay for it? Did you make it happen? No. The sun is there. Did you make the sun happen? No. Did you make your heart beat? No. So everything is free. So let us change the mentality. Our life is based on earning, paid, Paying the money, uh, earning this, deserving that, etc. Merit. Yes. No, this is not how God works. So if you spend 10 or 20 minutes be, uh, away from Him because of your weakness, because of an active destruction, whichever reason, when you come back, don't ever think that He's upset. Don't ever think that He is upset with you because you lost time. Don't lose time thinking that. You are losing time, precious time. Just throw yourself back again in his arms. Believe. You don't have the trust. Believe in that. Try it. Throw yourself and try it. Jesus at a certain point says, you don't believe in me, that's fine. But try what I'm saying. At a certain point of the Gospel of St. John, he says that. I love that. He said, you don't believe in me, that's fine. But try what I'm saying. And see if what I'm saying is true or, or not. You see? So, try the, the good God. Our world doesn't function as God functions. This is why our vision of God is blurry. It's not, it's uh, twisted. It's, it's distorted. So, we, it's a long journey to learn this unconditional love. It's a long journey to accept that I'm not paying for it. That I don't deserve it. No, I don't deserve his love. He is love. It's difficult to fathom. It's difficult to enter in contact with such being. And this is his being. Okay? So you don't lose time. Yes, I was... Uh, I was... Um, I, I went astray for 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 10 years, or 20 years. <laughs> and then, don't lose time. Throw yourself in, in his hands. So what is he... What pleases him? So let us put ourselves in... Uh, in, in in his shoes, so to speak. What pleases him? Is it um, 
is it the fact that you spent 40 minutes out of the 60, so the 20 lost, 40 minutes or 60 minutes out of 60, is this what, is this what pleases him? No, what pleases him is that you lost 20 minutes, but when you came back, you came back like this. You didn't doubt. You didn't doubt. And to give you an example of his reaction after the 20 minutes, remember what the, the father of the... Uh, please come in, come, come, come in. Remember the, the father of the prodigal son. You remember the prodigal son when he comes back? Is the father waiting for him inside of the house? No, he's outside, he's at the limit. Is he, is he, um, when he sees his son, what does he do? Does he say, oh, come you, be, you know, be, or oh, bastard, no? Can you go inside and clean yourself and then we will talk, go to the living room and then we will talk? No, no, no. What does he do? He's dirty. God is pure. He is sinner. God is love. He has a heart. Sins are of no interest. Sorry to maybe disturb you with this truth. I'm not a left wingist. I am. Uh, uh, I'm deep uh, in, in, in Catholicism. Uh, but what matters in his eyes is that his son is here. So don't let your sin become bigger than you. In your mind. The importance of your, of your sins become bigger, be, become an obstacle or a screen between you and God. That's not God's perspective. What does he do? He hugs him. And the text says he hugs him at length. Some of the translations, of course. At length. Why? Because it's his son. It's him. Entire him. Sins. They don't matter. Why? Because he has him. He finally has him. Because the son came back. You see? So, you, you lost 20 minutes. You lost 20 minutes. Fine. But what, I, what pleases him is your acceptance to be hugged back again rapidly. Do you see what I'm trying to say? He says, oh, that, I like that, he says. I like that. He's not, he's not creating problems. He's not creating obstacles. He's not upset with himself. He's not saying, I lost 20 minutes. No, he boom like a bullet. Came back. You see, you bounce. And the more you grow spiritually, the better you bounce. In the beginning, when we sin and do certain things, we sometimes need three days, three months, three years to come back. But when we grow spiritually and fall, because we fall, it's not bad in the sense that we learn our place. We learn his mercy. But we bounce better. We don't stay on the floor for three days, three weeks, three, uh, three months. We stand up immediately because we accept his extended hand and say, okay, stand up again. It doesn't matter. I want you. You see? I want you. Okay, so remember that what pleases God, what pleases God is not the length of time you spend co recollected, but it's the quality of your coming back. And you can come back 60 times during an hour. Just a minute, just a moment. You can come back to him even, even, that was the worst case, no, 60 times during an hour, which means you are extremely distracted, extremely distracted, but it's not in your brain. It's you offering yourself like a little child. You can pray and be very distracted. You can pray, be united to him, and be extremely distracted. It's not in your control. And nobody is asking you to sort of stop the distractions. Because if you want to stop the distractions, follow my hand, you go up and deal with them. And that's not prayer. So people who tell you, and unfortunately there are plenty, that in order to pray, you need to clear completely your mind, then you can pray. That's ignorance and criminal in ignorance. Ignorance, we understand now why, but criminal because 
he is stopping you from praying because you will never reach absence of distraction <coughs> ask a buddhist monk how many years he needs to stop to empty his mind as they call it and say oh, 20 years so you want to wait 20 years in order to empty your mind if you empty it it doesn't make sense you see so it's a different place the connection with god is here you tell me when i need to stop huh? no, we the, the connection the connection happens here your mind is passively distracted you hear the noise no we were hearing the noise in the kitchen did, did it prevent us from from praying i tell you no if i get upset with the noise if i wanted to stop i start to be more myself like more in control so i probably might have been gone here you see you see what happened but the noise itself cannot stop you from uniting yourself to God. You can unite yourself to God at any time. Go and walk by the sea, go and work, go and wait in the bus or I don't know, um, anything at home. Who stops you from doing this movement? I know in the beginning it would be a bit difficult in the sense that the distraction could be a little bit overwhelming. But offering yourself can happen at any time especially when you pray if you start saying the rosary like we did this morning we said one hail mary but the quality of that hail mary was completely different it was us in him and praying so our words were accompanying something happening here one final thing now to lessen the influence of the distractions on our heart we need a little bit of protection here to keep that encounter safe and this protection is while I am praying as I said yesterday my, I hold my, my rosary you don't have to show it to everybody you can discreetly have it in your hands uh, and or in your pocket and what are you doing you're saying the Hail Mary the, the rosary <coughs> Father Hail Mary. it's like un almost unconsciously uh, automatic routine you're saying it but when you say it, you sort of put a, a gentle screen. It's not a total screen. It's not totally opaque. It's semi-opaque between the, the brain, the mind, the mind, and the encounter. So you are, it's as if Mary, when you say, uh, uh, Hail Mary, you're very gentle, very gentle, like the waves, the gentle waves against uh, the shore, no? It's as if Mary comes and does this. Not totally, that would be a special prayer. It does happen sometimes, but don't expect that to happen every time. It's just one time to time. She does this. She protects this encounter. So when you hold your rosary, I know it looks funny when you say, I repeat, hold your rosary. And repeat the Hail Mary while you are praying. You acknowledge the weakness of the mind you acknowledge that Mary is the one who keeps you inside protects you from outside if you want here you acknowledge that you say pray for, for us sinner now, the key of the Hail Mary is pray for us pray for us means take us from where we are to where he is pray means this move me from here to that Pray for us means take me from here to there. Okay? So I repeat it. I repeat it gently. So I lessen the influence and the burden of the distractions. Because distraction will always happen. Passive distractions will often happen. Don't worry. You just keep um, uh, repeating gently. Decide every day to dedicate time for the prayer of the heart especially if you receive communion if you are a person who are in a phase of your life where you go to mass more often than just a sunday this means that you need a bit of support and at this level spend more time extra time if you can and i'm sure you can in a way or another in the morning or um, in the early evening spend some extra time just practicing prayer of the heart 
20 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It can go until an hour by shot, well, each shot. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? You do that and you remain immersed. Why? Because you receive Jesus and now you're open and you stay with Jesus. So you are drinking. Whenever you are inside, you don't know it, but you will notice it. Like say, for instance, you decide to practice prayer of the heart 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day but as a start for three months. Look at yourself after three months and you will come and say, Jean, yeah, you are right. I noticed that there are little changes happening. What type of changes? You are calmer, more centered, less annoyed and quickly annoyed by certain things or upset with certain things. You have greater clarity. You can see things that you weren't seeing before. Why? Because it's like when you have a troubled water, you wait a little bit and then all the uh, things in the water, they, they go down and then you have clear water. This is what happens during prayer of the heart. All the noise that we have during the day in our mind, in our life, etc. And then you see better. I'm not saying we practice it for this purpose. I'm not saying we practice prayer of the heart for that purpose. But this is one of the good effects. Um, there are even effects, good effects on the body itself, but I don't want to, to go there. It regulates better the body, etc. But we don't practice prayer of the heart for, first for this purpose. We practice it because the deep roots of our being needs to be uh, drinking uh, Jesus' uh, love. So after three months, you will turn that back and say, yes, there is a change. It's a little change, but it's a certain change. And you feel that <coughs> a new core, and I'm finishing with this, a new core of your being is starting to be uh, more solid inside, like a, like a new place where you go, a new depth where you go. You feel that your center is not anymore outside, like the majority of us, you know, the center of our life is what we're doing, uh, the errands and so forth, work, uh, business, uh, home, etc. But you start to see that your balance, the center of uh, gravi gravity is, starts to be inside and not outside. So you are less shaken by the changes in outside changes in your life, by the news. You are less shaken by all this. Why? Because you are taking deeper roots in Jesus. Uh, one question and then we finish. Yes, please. You have. You still have your question? Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Well, you answered some of that. Oh, I answered it. Okay. But just um, preparation for, for for your prayer time might be very important. Maybe I know that that you said like we, we cannot clear our minds, but, but we can accept that there will be distraction. And I know when I'm coming from work, sometimes I go to adoration and I'm full of uh, you know resentments, envy, jealousy, fear, anxiety. Yeah. Um, uh, and I have to surrender them as yeah. soon as I go into the church and say, I shouldn't be feeling these Jesus, but I am, I'm giving them yeah. to you now. Correct. Um, but the other point is that, that the distraction, I mean, the, the source of the distraction, some of it is, 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 is from myself and my own life, but, it, but it's not some of it also from, from the enemy. And would a, a protection yeah. prayer be helpful? Yeah. yeah, of course. The source of the distraction can be anything. It can be outside, from outside, totally uh, alien to you, like suddenly you have an ugly uh, vision of something disgusting, or it can be simply the, your own memory bringing things from your own life, things that happen to you, or things that are in you, to, to, in, a, in a way in you, and that are, um, be, can be the source of, of, of the, your, um, your the, the being distracted, of course. But in all these cases, there are distractions, even if it comes from you, doesn't regardless of the source of your distraction, they want to annoy you or they are there, fine, but how do I behave with them? That's the key. That's the key. Do I follow them? <coughs> Even if they come from me, it's not the time. The time is for this. And things will pop up, you know. Uh, the closer we go, we, we draw to God, uh, some issues in our life emerge you know some struggles essential struggles in our life will emerge why because you are naked in front of god god sees everything but in the beginning we think he doesn't see or at least we don't see we forgot but then the more you become uh, your friendship with the lord um, lasts and, and, and takes and and grows 
the more you want it or not, you have to open completely. And obviously, the, the, the main difficulties, the main uh, uh, wounds, or the main struggles will, will emerge. Uh, but they will emerge because he is addressing them. So God is showing you what is healing. Uh, absolutely. God is showing you what is healing. God is healing you during the prayer of the heart. Of course. This love, this trust, this lack of trust, this lack of love, or this um, abuse that we received uh, when we were young, our dad uh, treated us in a certain way, or, or this or that happened, and so forth. He taught, he. This is his job. This is what he does. He shows you the love maybe you, you never had. Or he shows you his presence then. So he is working on that. Trust that he is working on that. It's inevitable. So when you see anything emerging, just rejoice because it means that he is addressing it. It came, came the time now that the, the healer, God himself, the therapist, God himself, is now with his divine hands, with his gentle hands, with the Holy Spirit, with his overwhelming love, is healing you. And the best healing is just his love, to receive his love. So if needed, of course, he will show you his love, his overwhelming love. So yes, at that moment, exceptional moment, prayer can be very, very touching, very deeply moving, uh, in the sense that it becomes an experience of God's love. So if needed, he will manifest it, of course, because he knows us better than anybody else. So yes, indeed, he is working uh, in, in us. This is why prayer of the heart is fundamental. Not alone, it has, we need both legs, Lexi Divina, or listening to Jesus, and also being immersed in him, we need both the mass, the full mass, not part of the mass, both aspects. But yes, definitely, um, uh, he, he, is, he works during, the, the immersion is work. The immersion is communication. The immersion, being immersed in him, means he is giving you something. He is, trans, he is communicating his love to you. He is giving you his love. This is why being immersed is like being nourished and eating. It's not just sitting like, uh, like that and saying, okay, I'm waiting for the hour to go. No, this time you spend and the quality of this gift of yourself allows him to communicate more. Uh, I, I have the experience of having prayed with people on one-on-one -on -one situ uh, place, and I can tell you that there are no two persons th the same. I prayed with a lady who never went to Mass. She was a cook in a monastery. And uh, she had troubles and difficulties. And I, I sat down with her and, and I prayed. And I said, okay, offer your, your heart to, to, to God. Very, sim very simple person. Nothing really. She was just a, um, um, you know, a genuine, beautiful, simple person. A loving person. I never in my life saw the power, the quality she had in the way she prayed. I had very Catholics, <clears throat> very faithful people, sometimes struggling in their mind, uh, hesitating. She went like a bullet. <laughs> she went like a bullet, like this. I just said, let us pray. And I, I was crying. She was crying. I was crying. Why? Because of the quality of the simplicity. Uh, if you do not become like a child, you do not enter. That's the difficulty for the adult. It's an adult decision to become a child, not to regress, psychological regression, oh, I'm like a little child, that's okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> to become like a child is, is to reach this quality, we, we are back again to trust, no? To this trust, to this surrender. We do not surrender easily. We still keep a little bit, and be careful. He won't steal your heart, please come, just for a second. I can give my heart, take my heart, please. No, 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 no. I'm still holding on a little thing. He will not take my heart. Very good Catholic. Very active Catholic. But there is a little thing in my life where oh, I didn't give it to God. I'm not, I don't, I'm not planning to give it to God. And I'm praying. I do this, I do that. I go here, I go there. Oh, yes, very fervent, etc. 
there's a little thing I'm not giving to God. I know it, I know about it, but I decided that this area, I'll leave it for myself. Do you think my heart is in his hands? No. Do you think he will take my heart? No. No. Thank you. This lady went like this. Uh, I, I prayed with people, their imagination went, oh, I'm imagining myself with our lady, and she took me, and said, I said, no, 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 you are too much in your mind, you went back here. No, you are blocking yourself, why? Because you are back again to your, to this box. The simplicity of offering yourself to her, that's it, not more. Or you are withholding something. No, I prayed one day with one, he said, he was like a, like a, like a rock at the bottom of the sea. He was here. Couldn't move. I was praying. Nothing moving. He's praying. I'm praying. It's not moving. I, 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 I said to him, is, is there anything wrong? And a big thing unfolded. He said, yeah, many years ago, uh, I thought God was calling me. And that, you know, a big long story. And he thought that God was upset with him. And then he couldn't move. A good guy. But misunderstanding between him and God. Misunderstanding between him and God. He thought this, he thought that God wanted this, that God decided this, and he acted therefore this way. So he was like a stone at the bottom of the, of the sea. He couldn't move. I prayed with him. And I was shocked. I, was, ah, I, I felt like it's cold. It's, it's like not moving. I said, what? Very gently, I said, is, is, is anything wrong? And the whole story came out. He told me the entire story. He said, no, 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 that's not God. You see, what did I say? That's not God. So misconception of God, this is 100, almost 100% our case. That we, we think God in a certain way where God is completely different. So make your prayer, God reveal yourself as you are. Jesus, reveal yourself to me as you are, not as I think. Uh, um, shake my, my certainties. Uh, shake my conceptions of Jesus, of Catholicism, of faith, of this, of that. Just you come, I'm happy. Just change. If it needs to be changed, just change. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to, to, to bring one story. When I um, first heard of Jan's book, I actually prayed to, to, to Our Lady. I said, please get Jan to Ireland. So when he reached out to me, I just felt, you know, he, we need to hear this. And this last phrase, phrase, God will reveal yourself to you. I am, I lived like this. And I lived, tortured myself for so many years, thinking that God was this way and refusing to accept that he is that loving as the prodigal son. And, and, and we need to be, the, you're, all, there's no priests here, right? Mm. We're, all lay, we're all laymen. We need to be the church fathers and the spiritual fathers of today and not feel, oh no, I can't do that. I'm just... No, that leave that up to the father. We are the fathers, you know. See Thomas there and Aaron there, you know. We need to be the fathers because we have so many men out there that don't know how to pray. And you saw how simple it is when he was talking about the passive and the and the active distractions. Your passive distractions could be your sin in your past, and your active distractions could be the sin that you have today that you need to go to confession with. Don't let those stop you going into prayer. You know, use confession, use the Eucharist, and don't and, and, and just go into that. So I want to I want to get more out of out of you. I want to we want to bring this back into Ireland and bring this back into Derry, and just I'd love to know your feedback. But just be the spiritual fathers to bring that prayer to other men. See, you don't need to live with that suffering. You don't need to live with this that's going around in your mind. You don't want to, whatever you've experienced, whatever you, you don't need to live there. You can be somewhere else. You can be with God. Do you know, so that's that was what my was really was the message I wanted to get up to Derry was um, not Robert Nugent's image of God or blogger of God, because who am I at the end of the day? You go to him. You you have a relationship with him. Don't be feeding yourself on what I'm saying. You go to him. Because at the end of the day, we should be like our lady. Just go to him. Get out to him. You know, we should spend more time with Lexia Divina. Do you, do you know what I mean? If, if, we're, if we're really true, don't be feeding yourself too much off the social media side of the faith, which is we're trying to reach people that don't know the faith. The quality time you spend in prayer is marvellous. You know, it's, it'll feed you. 
The one thing is I do say, when I'm in the car, I do put on your, um, you have a ton of material. And if you're in the car, you can be listening to the different material that, they, that he has to form us in prayer. So that's where I really want to focus on. And I, I'd love to know your feedback afterwards, to give it your feedback on this. And you were going to ask. What I was going to say is um, an obstacle for a lot of people, and for your own fault of their own, uh, maybe it's because they, they don't have a relationship with God. Um, you know, or, uh, an obstacle for a lot of people is, um, you said yourself, uh, God really does respect our freedom and our free will, but a lot of people don't realize that. And they're quick to think that anything that bad happens, you know, is God's fault. What they don't realize is that if God intervened all the time, that would be an abuse of our free will, you know, and, and he's not the helicopter parents, you know what I mean? So I think if, the, if there needs to be an awareness um, spread about that, and then I think people would realize then that, um, I don't like saying onus because it's not really a burden. If I know that God isn't an obstacle to me, you know, um, and, you know, I think then it would be easier to um, take that first step and want to engage in a relationship with them and make the whole praying from the heart thing a lot easier, you know, because I realize then that God's not responsible for anything bad that happens and from our problems, you know. So um, I think that's important as well, like, yeah. you know, so a lot of it is awareness and stuff like that, um, but I, I, I yeah. love all this prayer from yeah. the heart thing. I, well, I we, this is where we're trying to bring awareness yeah. in because so many people think, oh, I've done my, I've lived my life like this, I've done this, I, uh, I had my addictions and I had my problems and I had my failings and we live all of our life there and our mind is there. What ultimately happens to you if you live in that negativity? It, it, you, you step into it. You know, this, we see this in Derry. You know, we have to step out of that and, know, and look at the correct image of God because we've been sold to like Father Shane yesterday was talking about uh, in, the, in his talk, he was talking about this incorrect image of God that we had in Ireland. This, this kind of dictator God, you know, if I sin, God, he's going to punish me in hell. We were so focused on saving people from hell, we never showed them heaven. Mm. This is the prayer of the heart is heaven. You, you bring heaven down here, and we're in heaven. We are literally in heaven. So it's, the frustrating thing for me is, I don't have the qualifications that you have to, but you, you we'll explain it to people and we'll, we'll step them in so they can start having a relationship. If we did this for three months, I guarantee you, you'd be better. And then the people would say, oh, there's a change. Because there is a change if we pray. So like, this is the message I want to get to Derry this year. That you have to be the spirit, the church fathers, every single one of you, don't care where you've been, what you've done, what sin you've committed, or what addictions you had, doesn't matter. God takes that and now we are the church fathers. We are the fathers. That's what we're called to be fathers. And we have to father those that don't know how to pray. So it doesn't matter how, don't care where, actually God is going to use whatever past you have and he's going to use it for the good. So that's what he does. So we just, do, we, we, we use this and we transform this city with this. If we don't believe in this, because I, I, I fundamentally believe in it. I, all I had to do was pray. Uh, later, I prayed to our blessed mother. I want Jan here in Ireland. You have to get him here. He contacted me. You remember. You know the story. I prayed. I said, I want him in, in this. <laughs> and that's, that's the fruit of prayer. Because if I ask God, he does it. What's the fruit in this? We will be men of... Make your life the prayer of the heart. Because I know we think this is the hour. But if you lived your life in the, in the mentality of the prayer of the heart, what are the distract, passive distractions? Your past sin. Can't change that. You leave that to one side. You go back into your heart. What are your active distractions? Sin that I have today. You deal with that. Lord, I offer you my sin. I go to confession. You put in a priest. I offer you my sin. I'm very sorry. Please take it. And you're back with God. If we did this, our life is the prayer of the heart. And then we're using this as the prayer of the heart. We will transform ourselves, we will transform our society. I think, um, if you know what you're saying, I, I think to really enter into the heart, yeah. to keep your heart with God, there's one thing that isn't really ever spoken about, and that's the enemy. 
the enemy of God's children, which are made in his like an image. And this isn't a negative aspect, but you know, in, in Ephesians 6 10, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And the powers and principalities aren't exposed enough. Because it's the powers and principalities that check us in our sin. Yeah. It's remember Satan is when's the when's the last time you hear a homily on Satan? Right? He's the great accuser, right? He's the deceiver, he's the liar, he's the destroyer of truth. He's before the throne of God all day, accusing God's children. Look what they're doing now, look at the look what they're doing now. God is a God of love and mercy. But it's important to understand why we're being held back, because there is a spiritual demonic element that attacks God's children because we're made in his like an image and it's not spoke off enough, Robert. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's, because it's it's him that holds you back from acting into your heart. It's him <coughs> that makes you feel guilty. It's him that wants to shackle you and weigh you down so that you can't enter into but, your but, heart. But to that I would say, just be careful. Yes, but we have, as, as you said, we, we can decide, you know, as Satan God can't, we have free will and he can't come into our life unless we, we accept. Yes. And the same with God. You know, they respect, they, we have free will. And that's why I'm saying, take, take, make the effort to do this prayer of the heart. You know, make a conscious effort to live your life in the prayer of the heart. Because we have to put our will into this. And if we're doing this, you will see others change. And it's so simple. That's what I want to get. It is so simple. Satan, you know, when you've had this, you know, we work. If we have the rosary in the Eucharist, we have this protection. Because we just live, don't, and, and we just live in a simple way. We, we protect ourselves with the rosary in the Eucharist. We fall, we have, a, we have addictions, we get, if we, if, we, if we keep focusing on the falling, we'll never get back. Christ. But my point is, Reverend, it's the enemy that wants you to focus on the fallen. Yes. He's the great infiltrator of the mind. He's not exposed to them. He's not talking about them. It's not to focus on them. It's to expose them so then that you to know that you're covered by the merits of Christ's precious blood that he hung on the cross. He died for each and what, every single one of us. Yeah. He reconciled his, his, his precious blood reconciled us to the Father in heaven. But it's the liar and it's the deceiver. And when you know that, then you can enter in here because yeah. you're not—you don't have a guilty conscience. Exactly. You know that you're bought and paid for yeah, by a heavy just price. I'm having a sleep and I'm conscious of uh, about the sons of God respects our free respects all our free respects. The devil doesn't have no respect. Sorry. He uses it that we have to allow him to enter in. So yeah. The, the devil doesn't have no respect at all for you, so he's always going to be. It's all, but, 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 but I know that, but sometimes we, fa we, we put so much emphasis on Satan, we don't understand, okay? We have to understand that, that, that God is power more powerful than him. Than him. But we're, 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 we have tea here. We have tea here. <laughs> Wait, we could keep going. Wait a second. Great talks, great food. And great heat. So you should get the three today. <laughs> <laughs>